Hello and welcome to the DAZN Soccer Show. Myself, Adi Oladipo, former Arsenal forward, Leanne Sanderson. All right, we're two games down in UEFA for Women's Champions League. And remember, the action was right here, live and exclusive on DAZN. It is match day two in this season's UEFA for Women's Champions League. Lazaroy. Lazaro goes for goal from distance herself and she finds the corner as well. Schluter beaten from distance once again. My right for Svenja Hoot. It's a pay -off! She's got it! And that should be that for Wolfsburg. Morinard looking for that pinpoint cross. It found Lindsay Horan. And Leon have the opening. A superb ball from Wendy Reynard. Ball with Harder. Harder now skipping forward. Wrighton's there. Wrighton pulls it back. Carr! That's definitely hers. And now it's Stanway. Stanway to shoot, and Georgia Stanway to surely win the game for Bayern Munich. So more struggles for the French side. Real Madrid, though, were able to keep the PSG chances relatively at bay. Two shirts to aim for. And that's an audacious effort. What a way to take the lead. Mariona Caldente is going for it. She is going for it. Oh, my word. Absolutely magnificent. An amazing goal. Yeah, some amazing goals there, weren't there? I mean, when you're seeing the level of... And look, let's talk about that, actually. When you, compared to when you used to play in the level now, how big do you think the jump's been? And that's no, no, not discrediting you. Obviously, you're, you're a Champions League winner, but how big do you think the jump's been? Yeah, it's difficult because, you know, it's hard for me to not be biased because my team, we won the Champions League yeah, and we had team. the best team, yeah. genuinely. If you look at the players, and I don't think anyone would disagree, you know, Kelly Smith, Rachel Yankee, Julie Fleet and Alex Scott, Karen Carney, like, sounds like I'm Leanne writing Sanderson. a song, doesn't yeah. it? Like, it's yeah. not like I'm about to rap. <laughs> but, like, it was just an unbelievable time and yeah. I think now there's more visibility. Yeah. And, you know, I would say the standard overall has got better because... More depth across Europe? Is that fair? Like more... more teams with stronger depth, stronger squads? Yes, to a certain degree, but I still think, you know, there's a reason why Leon win it every year True. because they're in a league that people often question. It's just them and PSG mm. um, to a certain degree. But I think there comes a time where an English team, like I've said, I won it 16 years ago now. I said it the same thing at Bournemouth Wood yesterday when I was on the pitch, giving me tomorrow her award. You know, I'm glad that I'm one of the only people to ever won the Champions League in England, but I want an English team to take that away from us. You know, I want them to win it. And I think, you know, this season, Arsenal, in Europe, but in the league are looking really good. I mean, they went behind against West Ham at the weekend, yeah. but they came back 3-1, you know, beating Leon 5-1, see Zurich 3-1. It's like these results are really, really good. And there's a different feeling around Arsenal this year, mm. a good feeling, you know. So I think Chelsea have won the WSL three years in a row. And I think this could be the year that Arsenal are going to push them. I mean, it went to the final day of the season last year, mm. but I still think that everyone expected Chelsea to win. Yeah, They knew Emma Hayes wouldn't let that happen. But this year, I think Arsenal are really coming after it. Yeah, let's talk about the English stars. Let's start with Arsenal. You mentioned there this group of death, right, that they're in, Juventus and Lyon. And it's one thing going away and beating Lyon, but you've got to follow it up. And they did at the end, it's beating Zurich 3-1. Yeah, Important. absolutely. And I think as well, there's a lot of squad depth. They've got mm. Hurtig now that's coming from <clears> Juventus. They've got Jordan Nobbs back fit. She came on against West Ham, was absolutely brilliant. Scored after being on the pitch for 75 seconds. You know, and against the Zurich, in the Zurich game, she scored that amazing goal, you know, inside of the step volley. And Jordan Nobbs is a big player. So hopefully she can stay injury free because she'll be massive for Arsenal. And I think, you know, their group is a very hard group. Yeah. When I played for Juventus, it was almost like I almost went to the club when it was in its first, you know, season. Mm. Therefore, they wasn't really ready for Champions League yet. And we played Arsenal in pre-season. We got beat 5-0. We played Chelsea three um, in pre-season, got beat 3-0. You can see now, you know, Juventus are drawing against teams like Arsenal, drawing against teams like Chelsea. You can see it. And Arsenal's still yet to play uh, Juventus next. Yeah, yeah. Let's stick with that group very quickly before we talk about Chelsea. Again, we call it the group of death because all the teams are strong in that group. Leon, they're in danger, aren't they? It's only the top two that go through. They drew with Juventus. Just the one point so far from Leon. They always win it. Leon always gets to the final. They're in big danger of not getting out of the group. Absolutely. You know, not won a game yet. A loss and a draw. It's not good for them, but... They're a top, top team. Yeah. They're making a lot of mistakes. Wendy Renard this year has made uncharacteristic like mistakes. 
I think obviously Kadisha Buchanan's now at Chelsea as well. She's a big loss for them for me. She was playing minimal minutes towards the end of her time yeah. at Lyon, but I think she's a big loss for them. Um, but I still think I expect Lyon to go through. And if they don't, I mean, it'll be a massive shock is, is for it, everybody. Obviously, look, it's not good for the Champions League if they don't go for a bit. In terms of opening it up then to like five or six potential winners, you Barcelona, you Wolfsburg, Chelsea, Arsenal, would it be a blessing if they don't? So it will be guaranteed a new name on the trophy. And I think then with the favourites go in, everyone's got an opportunity. Yeah, I guess it depends on, you know, you have to have a little bit of luck and the perspective people are coming from because I think Leon seem to get better as the tournament goes yeah. on. They've never performed this badly mm. with results-wise to a certain degree. But I think, you know, Arsenal, to put things into perspective, have never beaten Leon. Mm. We never beat them. When I was there, they've never beat them in the history of the Champions League. And they was able to beat them 5-1. Away from home. Exactly. So, you know, I don't want to get carried away, but I no, 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 we can get carried agree away. with you that <laughs> maybe if they don't go through, it will open up for everybody else. But then I don't think it necessarily would open up just for an English team. Because mm. I think a lot of people might think, oh, you know, then Arsenal Chelsea are going to win. Well, no, because they're still Barcelona. Still who, PSG. They're still unbelievable others, yeah. team. Barcelona are a fantastic team. They really are. And they just come unstuck last year in the final because they were beaten by a better Leon team and Hegerberg was back and she was amazing. Mm. Stick with Arsenal very quickly. Uh, you were at Boreham Wood to give Needham a, a trophy for 150 appearances. It's funny because I, I see the photo of you and her and she's smiling. I can almost see a grimace in that smile as well. Obviously, she isn't playing right now. I think me and you spoke at the start of the season that she is the star. She is the key person, key personnel. Why isn't she getting minutes? What's going on there? It's a weird one because, you know, I don't know the ins and outs, but for me, she's my favourite player to watch in the league. I absolutely mm. love her. I've said it for two, three seasons now. She's breaking all different types of records. She's a fantastic player, but I think, you know, you only see the role as a manager. He's made this change where he's put Marnham in there. Yeah. She scored, she's getting assists and she's playing well. He also started to play Miedemar a bit deeper yeah. this season. And a lot of people have said, you know, she can play almost like Dennis, that Dennis Burkamp type of role. Yeah. But I personally prefer Miedemar up there. She's kind of like, not to draw comparisons because I'm, before people start saying you're comparing her to Haaland, I'm not comparing her to Haaland, but she's the type of player that stays in the box yeah. and can score those types of goals and gives a different option. And I just think she makes everybody else around her better. So for me, it should only be a matter of time before she goes back into the lineup. Mm. But I did feel for her at the West Ham game because, you know, no player doesn't want to play, let alone Miedemar. I mean, it's like taking Harry Kane out of the Tottenham team. Mm. You know, it's almost like things you just can't imagine. Imagine if Harry Kane didn't play for England. That, for me, is the magnitude of Miedemar not playing for Arsenal. I guess her problem, though, right now is Arsenal winning. Yeah. So you don't change a winning team, do you? They're winning and they're winning games big as well. Well, Jonas Edevold's created a situation here that I don't think he expected. That's not to say he didn't want Marnham to do Freedom Marnham to do well, but she's gone in and done exceptionally well. So you can't then take her out of the lineup, but you have to make space mm. for a player like Miedemar. For me, you do. But he's created a situation there that I'm sure he didn't really expect to create because he wants to rotate the team. But for me, I would never take Miedemar off the pitch. That's just my opinion. Yeah, uh, let's talk about Chelsea. A uh, comfortable win for them, 8-0. You don't see those kind of score lines in the Champions League, but it shows how good Chelsea are right now. Started the season with a little blip. Now Chelsea are going through the gears. And one of the big favourites to win the tournament. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel for the Albanian team because obviously they're not in the strongest league in their home country. And I expected Chelsea to win in that way. But I think in this competition, now there's not many teams like that. No. I mean, I think a lot of people expected Benfica to be a team like that as well. And we saw it took Georgia Stanway to score, you know, a last minute winner in the last game for Bayern Munich for them to actually beat Benfica. So I feel for the Albanian team, but I think Chelsea are just too strong. And I've said it many times before when I did the game against West Ham and I spoke to we spoke to Paul Koncheski and we were saying about how do you beat these types of teams because mm. you know Sam Kerr's on the bench they've got you're a writing in there they've got Frank Kirby who says sometimes she can't play through illness or an injury they'll bring in a Jesse Fleming who's an Olympic gold medalist you know what I mean yeah. like they'll, they've just got so much genuine strength that they can just mix it and match it and mm. Emma Hayes has done an amazing job there so for me this is the one that's always got away from Emma Hayes with regards to at Chelsea because she was our assistant manager mm. at Arsenal when we won the Champions League, you know, all those years ago. But this is the one that I think she desperately would want to win. And you know, obviously she's still not on the sideline and we wish her a speedy recovery. Yeah, we certainly do. A away from the English teams, good wins as well for Barcelona and Wolfsburg, two strong teams, especially Wolfsburg. They've been strong for years. But Barcelona got to the final last year, as you say. Many people thought they would give Leon a better game in there and just got kind of blown away in that one. But those two teams... Or expect to go deep in this competition. Yeah, I mean, and the additional players, Lucy Bronze, Kieran yeah. Walsh, like I didn't, and Alexi Pruteras is still out injured, so mm. she's yet to come back the best player in the world. Yeah. So, you know, they've got amazing players they genuinely have, and, you know, there's a reason why they went unbeaten in their league. They're a fantastic team, and when you watch them live, Barcelona, they genuinely like the way they move around in triangles and the way they pop the ball around for fun. 
and the additional players that they have in Lucy Bronte, Kira Walsh, I mean, that realistically should set them up in a really good place because I think if those two players were playing last year in the final against Leon, that would have been the difference to a mm. certain degree. It's easier said than done. Mm. You never know that hindsight's a great thing, but Barcelona know what they need to do to win the competition because you don't want to keep getting to the final and not winning. Any team surprised you in this tournament? Obviously, the big names we know are doing well apart from Leon. But Bayern Munich, two from two. Roma, two from two. Have they surprised you at all? I think Bayern Munich have always been that team. I wouldn't basically be saying surprising, but I think there's always been comparisons to their men's team yeah. because they've had such a strong men's team for years and people mm. used to go and sign for, for Bayern Munich. For American players have gone there and played and a lot of people I know, and it just wasn't at that point yet. Whereas I think now, you know, they brought in Georgia Stanway, who I was actually is a massive addition to their team because after the Euros, she scored a good goal Euros, as well, Stanway. scored a really good goal. She could have had a pick of the bunch, yeah. which team she would have gone to. And I'm so, I, I would have expected her to have probably gone over to America at that point, but mm. a massive coup that Bayern Munich were able to get her. I wouldn't say Wolfsburg have surprised me because they're always in and around it. You know, yeah. there's no, there's a reason why they've been at the top in Europe for over 10 years. It's not by luck. The longevity that teams like Wolfsburg and Leon have are unbelievable because people forget there's been teams that have come through the system that, you know, have run out of money. There was Tereso a few years ago. They bought every single player. Marta played their Crystal Press and they ran out of money. So the product of these clubs have like Wolfsburg and Leon. you've got to give them a lot of credit because they have longevity. So I wouldn't really say Wolfsburg have surprised me. Roma, yes, yeah. because, you know, I played against them when I was at Juventus a number of times and they've got a, they've got a good, you know, their, their manager actually was uh, my assistant manager, one of the academy managers at Juventus. And they've got a good product there. They've got a great facility. They're backed by the men. And, and those types of things make a difference because mm. a lot of people can turn around and say, well, what does it matter if they're backed by the men or not? It does. Yeah. Trust me. Thankfully, we've progressed from where if a, if a male team gets relegated or something like that, then a women's team get, used to get cut, mm. believe it or not. We'd be sitting there thinking, oh, they're in the relegation zone. We might get our funding taken. Whereas thankfully now, you know, the men's team are backing and Roma are doing really, really well. So they'll probably be my surprise of, of the bunch. Wow, Leanne. Look, what Leanne doesn't know about the UEFA Women's Champions League, you don't need to know. You, you really don't. English team's doing well so far. We might have a surprise team coming through as well. Match day three, remember, is live and exclusive on the zone, November 23rd and the 24th.